Today we're going to take some inspiration and creativity to make something our own. Our inspiration today is this bag here. It is a Christian Dior clutch and isn't it gorgeous? It's quilted and it's Italian leather. So we have the Italian leather, we have a domestic machine here, and today I'm going to show you how to quilt leather on a domestic machine. But before we get started, let's go over a few things that we're going to need. The first thing that you're going to need is some leather needles. Now, I use the Schmetz leather needles and they work great. I've tested a little bit of this leather with a leather needle and then with a sharps needle. And actually, I like the leather needle better. So I would say go ahead and get some leather needles. You can get these from Joanna Fabrics or your local quilt shop. The other thing you're going to need is some kind of regular foot for your machine. Now I have a Teflon foot and these Teflon feet are really convenient because it helps create a non-slip surface when you're sewing. The leathers we're using are not sticky so you don't really need this. If you have it, use it. If you don't, no worry. Don't go out and buy one just for this. You'll get through it okay. Another thing we're going to need is some kind of marking pen that you can erase on fabric. Now, this is leather. I do highly recommend that you go ahead and get some of these silver marking pens. I got a whole bunch of them from Springfield Leather that I am really excited about. They tend to last a little bit longer than some of the other brands that I've tried. So I'm going to link them below so you can go ahead and grab a few and have them in your stash. The other thing you're going to need is a measuring ruler and you're going to need one that has angles on it. So my most rulers today come with this automatically and we're going to be using the 45 degree angle as we line this up on the leather to make the lines for our first set of stitches which is the crisscross stitches and then the other thing you're going to need is some kind of temporary adhesive i like 505 spray and this is something you can get at your local quilt shop you can get it at joann's michael's um, even online if you need to. So grab a bottle of this and this will last a while. The only thing I recommend is to make sure that you have the area that you're going to spray covers. So I have a piece of cardboard that I keep folded up and when it's time for me to spray, I go over to there, I unfold it, I place my project on that board and I spray. So that way no overspray gets on my table or any place any place else that I don't want it to be. I'm actually going a little unconventional and what I'm going to do is use an embroidery thread in my top thread when I quilt. I'm going to use either a Guterman or a Metter, just standard weight in my bobbin. And I'm gonna make sure that they're pretty close in color, that they match pretty well. You can use a, you really wanna use a heavier weight thread pretty much as heavy as your machine can take and what you have available to you. I actually had bought some Tex 35 at a show I went to um, in Dallas not too long ago and used that on this bag here. It was a, just a cream color and it really worked well. So my machine did okay with it. Some machines I think might have a hard time with it, but I would say you know, try embroidery thread if you don't have the ability to get a higher tex or like a tex 35 or 30 weight thread. The maxi lock threads that you can get at Joanne or Michaels are actually a tex 27. So you tr want to try to go a little bit heavier than that if you can. Let's talk about domestic machines for just a minute. So every de domestic machine is made differently. And it used to be that domestic machines were just a domestic machine. It didn't really matter who you bought it from. It was all the same motor. Well, nowadays, that's not the same thing. Domestic machines are made differently. So some of the cheaper machines that you can find maybe at Walmart or online don't have as strong of a motor as some of the ones that you can find in maybe a local quilt shop. 
So know what your machine can handle before you dive into any project you do, not only with leather, but with anything. This is a Janome Skyline 7 that I have, and it is what I would say maybe middle of the road. It is definitely not a semi-industrial machine. It is actually what I would consider a kind of wimpy machine. It sews two pieces of fabric together, and it does well at it, but if I add a lot of bulk, it doesn't particularly like it. I think it's really a good machine to test on because if I can make this bag in leather on this machine and you have a kind of middle of the road machine, you should be fine. You should be able to do it no problem. So we're gonna go ahead and go over to the marking table and I'm gonna show you how to mark for this first set of quilting stitches. Okay, so our approach to this is gonna be a little bit different than if you were quilting a quilt or something else. Typically when you quilt, you get shrinkage. So you might start off with a project that is 12 by 12, but when you get done quilting it, it is maybe 11 by 11. It just, it shrinks up. Those stitches shrink the fabric. This isn't the case with this leather. I've done several tests and I got no shrinkage at all, which is a great thing because when we sew this on a domestic machine, we want to keep the foam or whatever kind of backing we have, fleece, foam, whatever it may be, out of our seam allowances. So what I want you to do is to go ahead and cut your pieces out first, which again is very different, but you're going to cut two of your main pieces and we're using this gorgeous hot pink leather today. Okay, I went ahead and fused already with my 505 spray, put the foam on one of the backs. So I'm going to go to my spray station, spray my foam with a 505, and then I'm just going to center it right on the back, just like I did on this piece here. Being again, we're keeping it out of the seam allowances, and this is cut a half inch shorter than your piece. However, we are actually going to use a quarter inch seam allowance all the way around. So it is definitely going to be out, but then when we turn it, whatever kind of film, uh, foam or fleece you have is going to take up that space. It really keeps it nice and easy to sew on a domestic machine. So from here, we're going to turn this piece over and we're gonna make a bunch of marks on the front of this so we can go ahead and start our quilting. So step one is going to be to find a center point. So if we take a look at this back here, let's take a little close up of this. You can see that all of my diamonds here are perfectly centered underneath this handle. So they're centered, centered vertically and horizontally. So the, how I did that was I found a center point, which was right here, and then I worked around that center point to mark all my lines. So let me show you how to do that. Okay, to find the center of this piece right here, what we want to be the center, center point, is not necessarily going to be the center of the piece because we have our slip handle attached. So we want it to be a little bit lower than that. So find the center horizontally and from the bottom you're going to go up three inches and right there at the center you're going to make a mark and we're going to be making all of our lines right around that mark right there okay you see I've got a little dot there with my silver marking pen so from here we want to make two inch diamonds so each of these lines here that are going diagonal are two inches away from each other in every direction. So if this is the center, we want to make a line one inch below and one inch above so that we get a full two inch uh, diamond here in the middle. We're gonna do that in both directions. So using your ruler and that 45 degree angle, place the 45 degree angle at the top of the bag. Now, in addition, we are going to place it so that this mark right here is at the one, in, one of the one inch lines on our ruler. So if I take this and line it up on the 45 degree line, so my 45 degree line is here on the top, I'm trying to keep this out of the glare of the camera, here is my center line. Well, that's on a quarter of an inch right now. So I'm going to move this ruler down 
until that center line is exactly one inch away from this edge and my 45 degree angle is lined up at the top. So you want both points to be lined up. So just keep maneuvering it until you get it right. So I have got my 45 degree line here. My center dot is right here, which happens to be right on this line. So here's a better shot of that. You can see here's the 45 degree line here. That's on the top and perfectly lined up. And my one inch mark is right in here. Let's see where it is. It's right here, which is right along the one inch line. Here's our one inch line going diagonally. So once you have both of those lined up, you can go ahead and draw a line diagonally now I have a six inch ruler, so I'm going to draw a line on both sides of my ruler, as long as you have an even numbered ruler. So two inch, four inch, six inch, eight inch, you can go ahead and draw lines on both sides. If you have a three inch ruler that you're using, don't do it, or a two and a half, because I know a lot of times quilters use those half inch measurements. So now I'm going to move my ruler down. I'm not worried about my 45 degree angle anymore. I'm moving the line that I drew, the silver marking line, I'm putting the two inch line directly on top of that line. Okay, so now those are lined up and I'm going to draw two more lines, one on each side. And then I'm going to come over two more inches and do exactly the same thing. Okay, so now we have all of the lines going in one direction. Now we need to get them in the other direction. So to do that, we're going to go back to using our 45 degree angle, and we're going to line it up on one of the sides. So let me maneuver this, line it up on one of the sides, and I'm still looking for my center point here. So I want to place that center point right along a one inch line, just like I did before keeping my 45 degree angle on one of these sides. So I'm going to bring this down until both of those points match. Okay, so right there looks good. So now that I have that, I'm going to draw a line here and I'm going to draw a line here. So those are our first two lines. So I'm going to move my ruler so that it's two inches lined up with one of the lines. It doesn't matter if it's this one up here or this one down here. Draw another line. I'm off the grid over here. I'm off the leather, so I don't have to worry about that one. But when I move it again, I'm going to go ahead and mark it. So now I have my center point. I have all my lines drawn around that center point. So I'm going to mark my other piece exactly the same way, and then we're going to start quilting this. Okay, I have all my marks made, and we're going to start quilting. Now, one of the things I do when I quilt, and I, and I think this is um, probably a good idea, is you don't want to start on one of the side. You don't want one of your first stitches to be on the side. You want it to be in the middle. And so we're going to follow that kind of quilting rule and start with some of these middle lines. So as we stitch down, I, we're just going to stitch straight lines here. I have my leather needle on and I have my Teflon foot. I am going to back stitch a little bit beginning and the end because I just don't want any of these stitches to come out. Even though we're going to be over stitching this when we stitch our bag together, it's just going to help to make sure we don't have little ends, any, any little ends poking out. So I'm just going to put my needle down and we'll start going. When you back stitch, you don't have to back stitch a lot. It's just a little one or two stitch back and forth so that you can lock it in. 
Now the other thing that I want to do is increase my stitch length. So I have my stitch length set to a 4.0 and I have my needle in the middle right now. So I'm going to stitch in one direction and then I'm going to turn and stitch in the other. Okay, so we have both pieces quilted in the diagonal pattern. So from here, I'm just going to take a very soft cloth. So I'm just going to use one of my husband's old t-shirts. And I'm just going to take any markings that I see off of here. Now, sometimes with these pens, you need to put a little bit of water. And you can do that. It's not going to hurt the leather. So I'm just going to wet this slightly. And just go ahead and get all my markings off. Okay, so from here, now that all of our markings are off, we're gonna make our second set of markings. So to do that, we have to, again, remember where our center is. So in our case, our center is this diamond right here. So on this diamond, we want to make vertical marks. We're gonna be, be working off this line right here. And we wanna make vertical marks on each side of these connected points, these four connections right here. So we want to go a quarter of an inch on this side of this particular intersection and then a quarter of an inch on the other side of this particular intersection. We're going to do the same thing here, here, and here. So we're going to end up having two, four, six, eight lines going vertically. Then we're going to, again, using the same diamond, we're going to go on the top of it and on the bottom of it. And we're going to do two lines horizontally here and two lines horizontally here using those same measurements. So take your ruler and I'm just going to start with this one here. I'm going to line my ruler up so my quarter inch mark is lined up with all of the intersecting points here. So I'm just going to turn this to the side so I can see it and mark them. So the good thing about having these lines here already is that we can make sure that our ruler is set exactly straight. So my quarter inch mark, I can see, is right here at this point, this point, and this point. And if I have them lined up on each one of those points, then I know that my line will be straight on the bag. So I'm just going to draw a line just like that. Then I'm going to turn this piece around and from that line I just drew, I'm going to measure over a half inch and make another line. So I'm just going to put the half inch mark on the line I drew and then draw one more. So now what that has done, and I'm trying to keep the glare of the ruler away from the light so I'm sorry if this is a little dark but you should be able to see I have two lines here and here is my intersecting point and the line is a quarter of an inch on each side of that all the way up and down okay so I'm going to repeat again we're focusing on this line right here only don't look at this one because if you do you're going to end up with too many lines stay here on this focal line and continue by making all those same kind of marks
Okay, so all of the vertical lines are now made. So now we're going to do them horizontally at this point here and at this point here. We're going to do exactly the same thing. So we have all of the other marks made. So I'm going to make these same marks exactly the same way on the other piece and then we're going to go quilt these. So the quilting came out really well and I did nothing special. I did just put one layer of foam. Now if you'd like to put fleece and foam, you could do that. If you want to use a thicker foam, you could certainly do that. Just know what your machine can handle. Even though it's not in the seam allowances, you're still stitching through it on the main part of the bag. So you might want to experiment with maybe some scrap faux leathers and some foam or fleece before you actually sew on this just to kind of make sure you know what it can handle. Also, the more padding and the more foam or fleece you put in this, the puffier it's going to be. That's all personal preference. If you like a less puffy bag or a less puffy look, then you're probably going to want to go with just some fleece or a very thin layer of foam like this by Annie Soft and Stable. If you want a puffy looking bag, then you may want to go with a thicker foam like a Pellon and maybe even add some fleece to it. And as long as your machine can handle it, you can do it because it's your bag. You can do whatever you want. So on Thursday's live, we are actually going to finish up this bag. We're going to sew it live on this domestic machine. And at that time, you'll be able to purchase kits. And the kit's going to give you just enough leather to make this bag. It's going to give you the pattern pieces, it's going to give you the lining, and then also the zipper and zipper pull so that you can make a bag just like this. My goal with doing this for you is to show you that you can use leather. You just need to use the right kind of leather. So just because you have a domestic machine doesn't mean you can't use it. You just need to make sure you have the right tools, the right kind of leather, and be shown that it can be done. So everybody can use leather. The kits are very affordable. 
test it out, see how you like it. So until Thursday, happy sewing.